Kegs, cans or bottles? What is the best thing to store your beer in? Let's have a chat about it. Welcome back, brewers and beer lovers to Flying Wombat TV, the channel where it's all about beer, banter, and bloody good times. So we're gonna be talking about bottles, cans, and cakes. What is the best thing to store your beer in? We're gonna go right to left, let's get into it. So first, let's talk about bottles. Now, there's a couple of really obvious pros to using bottles. First off, really low barrier to entry. Basically, anyone can use a bottle. Doesn't matter if you're brewing your beers in a bucket or if you're brewing your beers in stainless steel. You can still put your beers into bottles, bottle condition them, drink them whenever you want. So A, they're cheap. B, anyone can use them. You don't need a whole lot of fancy equipment. A um, Couple cons when it comes to bottles. First of all is cleaning. It is a massive pain in the ass to go ahead cleaning bottles, especially when you are reusing them again and again, which most people tend to do because it's more cost effective, especially if you're using glass bottles. This is PET plastic, so less so, but people still reuse them. So a lot of cleaning. You gotta make sure you get all of the residue out. You don't want any leftover bacteria or yeast or anything by the time you put your next beer in it. The next big, really big con is, um, you know, light does get in. This is a dark bottle, and the reason that bottles are dark stained is so that there's less light actually getting into the beer because light does damage, uh, particularly hops. So those hop residue that's in here, that giving that hop flavor, they get really damaged uh, by light rays, which is, you know, a bit of an issue when it comes to bottling, which is why good uh, craft breweries that, you know, are trying to protect their beer will use dark bottles. And then you got, you know, the big boys, I'm not gonna name names, that are using, you know, complete see-through stuff where you can see the beer inside. Sure, it might look prettier, but you're gonna ruin the beer. I guess they do it because their beer's not that good anyway. <laughs> it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> <laughs> Cameraman's lost it. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> um, all right, continuing on from that, um, you know, last con would be that there is the chance of oxygenation when you are using bottles. Not a major issue. As long as you're doing bottling right, that's never really going to be a problem. But the, the issue is there. It can happen when you're actually filling up that bottle. It is exposed to oxygen during that brief moment. It could oxygenate your beer with something like a Nipah. But that being said, if you're doing it right, you're never gonna have that issue. Moving on. Next up, cans. So a can is kind of like a bottle, right? Looks similar-ish, it holds a similar volume. You can get things that hold the same amount. But there is a couple clear differences. First, clearness. A can is not clear. Light can't get through it, therefore, it's better protected from light. There's the two big things that damage beer, heat and light. If you remove one of those factors, you know, you're gonna have a better tasting beer for longer at the very least. So the fact that cans are not see-through is a huge advantage for them. Uh, other big advantages, you're not reusing these things. You use a can once and done. So it's not like with a bottle where you need to thoroughly clean and thoroughly sterilize it to remove any of the residue before you use it again. With a can, you only use it once. Next benefit. Um, you know, they're lighter, which means it's easier to just take them to events. You can actually take them to events like concerts, like, you know, sporting events, what have you, because cans are permitted a lot of the time and bottles are not because you've got to go a couple, you know, idiots that go chucking bottles at people. It's ruined the fun for everyone. So a couple benefits there. Another one is that uh, cans cool down faster because of the uh, thermal dynamics of metal versus plastic. When you drop these in an esky, they're gonna be drinkable a whole lot quicker than a bottle is that's made of glass or a plastic. Last big benefit is, you know, they are more environmentally friendly, provided that you are actually recycling them. Those are the pros, uh, pros, pros. Cons, uh, there is a barrier to entry. It means you do need a canning machine. It does, it means that you do need a proper bottling gun. It also means that you're going to be buying more of these than you are your bottles. You could theoretically buy a bunch of bottles, reuse them forever. Cans, you need to reuse a new one every single time. So you're gonna be buying more of them all the time. Um, it also means that it is a little bit more time consuming and it is quite frankly, a bit more of a pain in the ass than it is to bottle beers because there's a bit more of a process to it. We've done a video on it, you know, the thumbnail card thing up there. If you wanna go and watch that one, how to can beers. Um, 
think that's all the cons I can think of for the moment. I'll come back if I think of another. Just thought of one more. It's kind of a pro for the cans and a con for the bottles. So normally when you're bottling, you're doing bottle conditioning. So you put a flat beer in, you have a little bit of sugar in there, it bottle conditions, it gets bubbly. With a can, you just put ready to drink beer. Yes, I know for those of you out there, you can do pre-carbonated beer into bottles. Generally speaking though, you do it flat and you bottle condition. And with a can, you're putting it in ready to go. So kind of a con, kind of a pro, take it how you will. Kegs, the big boys. Now, I love kegs. Everyone loves kegs. There's a couple super obvious reasons why. A, you have one keg. You have many bottles or many cans, which means you only need to do the job once. Once it's in the keg, you're good to go. It is less maintenance, it's less work, it's less cleaning. You only need to clean one of them. You don't need to clean 24 or 50 or 100 of them. Um, other things, easier to clean. It's all stainless steel. Yes, these are, you know, they're metal and they've got a plastic lining inside, whatever. These are plastic and glass, can be a bit more of a pain in the ass to clean. Kegs, they just are easy to clean. You can get keg cleaners, you hook up, you know, the beer connect and the gas connect, and then it washes everything out for you. It's fully automated. Super easy to clean. Next thing, you know, they last forever. Bottles can last forever, right? You drop a glass bottle, it breaks. You drop a metal keg, all you've done is, you know, hurt your foot. It's fine. The keg's fine. Uh, next thing, light protected. Same as the cans, these things are fully protected from light, which does make them superior in protecting the beer to bottles. Next thing after that, um, you can have draft beer on tap in your own home. Who doesn't love that, being able to pour a pint? So, you know, huge benefit there. So I guess that's where we start talking about the cons. It does mean that you need taps. You can't really get the beer out of here unless you have the means to do so. So it means you've got to have that investment upfront to actually go and get taps in your own home. Whether it's by building something like this for yourself, like a Kiza bar, or it's by buying a kegerator, or it's by you know putting taps through your fridge at home, you put the kegs inside the fridge. It does mean that you need to do the work to actually set it up to get it right. It also means that you do need to clean your beer lines. It's not zero cleaning involved, but you know, you need to clean your beer lines less frequently than you do this stuff and, you know, it's, it is easier ultimately. Uh, next con is, um, you know, cost. I guess if we're just going to talk about raw cost and barrier to entry, someone that's just gotten into brewing, it's going to be a whole lot easier to just use bottles. It's, you know, anyone can do it. All you need is a bucket and just put your beer into the bottle from the bucket. With kegs, you do need to have different connects. You do need to actually go about buying the keg, which is more expensive than bottles. And you need to be able to serve the beer and stuff from it. So there's that stuff going for it there. Um, besides that, you know, it's got the same benefits as this, fully recyclable because you just use it forever. Um, and you get your own beer on tap. <laughs> <laughs> I Might love it. <laughs> I love beer on tap. I love free beer on tap, man. <laughs> <laughs> we did think of another con these things are a bitch to move once they're full so for example our bar here i think some time ago there was a video where you saw us put a keg in here i can't remember but basically this thing opens from the top which means it requires a bit of muscle power to lift your keg plop it in move your shit around while you drop the keg in it's heavy these things especially this is a little one this is a nine liter one the 18 liter ones or some of you might do 50 liter kegs they get very, very heavy. So they are a pain in the ass to move around. But then again, once you've done it, it's set and forget. It's on tap for you, ready whenever you want. So a bit of a trade-off. One other con is that, you know, if you want to take this to friends and family, you want to go show off your awesome beers to people, so easy to just grab these out of the fridge and, you know, head over. Pretty hard to bring a keg. It means you actually need to worry about, A, lifting the damn thing and carrying it around. You need to worry about keeping it cool because you serve this under pressure. So when it's been shaken around, it's gonna take a while until you can pour it out of a tap. Also means you're gonna need a portable tap. Also means you're gonna need portable gas. So it is painful if you want to show off your beers to people where it's not at your own place. But there are ways around it. And, you know, we'll do a video soon on ways that we've figured out around it. We've um, got a little bit of a setup where if you want to take kegs to a party, that does make it a whole lot more portable. We'll, uh, you know, we'll do a video on that coming in. I said at the start of the video, we're going to talk about which is the best. Honestly, the truth is there is no one right answer. You know, every brewer is different. You're at different stages of your brewing life cycle. So different things will be better for you. Let's talk about it that way. 
If you're new to brewing, if you don't have a whole lot of equipment yet, or if you just want the ease of use of being able to take bottles to places or you know not needing equipment to actually put your beer into things, bottles are the way to go. You know, they've got that time delay, they've got all the other cons we talked about, but if you're new into the game or if you just want to just, you know, get your beer into something quickly and kind of do a set and forget, bottles are your friend. Now talking about these two. I'm gonna say the next easiest is gonna be kegs. People tend to keg before they can, because normally you can from a keg most of the time. So cans are, uh, kegs are your next best friend. Uh, if you've gotten to the point where you're really heavily into brewing, you've convinced your wife, your friends, your family, you're saving money by brewing your own beer. Ah! Well, you know what, you aren't, but it doesn't matter because you're the only one that knows that. Anyway, your keg, kegs is where it's at. So you know that you've got your own bar set up, you know you're already sunk in the cost, you've got all that shit going on. You can use kegs, you can wash them easily, you can just whack them on the tap and you get to show off to everyone that you have your own beer on tap in your own house. That's where that one comes in. When you're getting to that next phase where you kind of want to be a real dick and you really want to show off the fact that you make beer, that's when you get to canning. Yes, I'm talking about me. I love the fact that I get to show off to people. Oh yeah, I've got my own cans, I've got my own labels. Yeah, for sure. But you know what? It is a bit of a wanker move. I don't care. I love it. I have cans. It's awesome. But it's a pain in the ass to do cans. So. Uh, you know, there's pros and cons to that one, but when you're at that stage where you've got your own taps and you really love making a lot of beer and you love to take a lot of beer to people, that's when cans really become your best friend in conjunction with kegs because, you know, I still want beer in my own house as well. So I, I guess that's where it's at. It's different horses for different courses. This is more entry level. This is medium level. This is when you get to supreme craft beer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway guys, I, <laughs> cameraman's done. <laughs> I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed me talking a little bit of shit. I am a little bit merry <laughs> while we're filming this one, as you might be able to tell. And uh, you know, I had a good time, so whatever. Anyway, like and subscribe, do all the YouTube-y things. It's been a pleasure doing all this stuff with you. If you have any topics you want us to explore in future, drop them down below in the comments. If you have any questions about doing any of this stuff, let us know and you know, we'll drop links and stuff to videos about these different things as well. Anyway guys, cheers and uh, brew on.